Hello everyone, this is Legion of Gao here with a very quick haul video. Um, this is very quick because uh, I got these books actually uh, like two weeks ago maximum, two three weeks ago I think for some of them, for at least the first two. There's only four books and the other two were from last week technically. Uh, reason being because university uh, was wrapping up the semester so there was a lot of assignments I had to finish. A lot of papers at the right. Uh, that's all done now, so I have more time. I have more free time now in general. So that also just means I get to go buy more books or like look for books. So first up, I have two Magic the Gathering comic books. Um, I found these in a store called the Phantom Zone, which is in a place which is in like another suburb that I haven't been in before. They had a lot of fifty cent. Uh, like back issues, and these were two of them I found. Uh, they're not worth anything. I just really like Magic the Gathering as a game, and I thought the comic books are pretty cool, especially the old ones, uh, because uh, there's a lot of, like the, the storyline in the old in the old days were really nice compared to what they are now, uh, which is mainly told through like text stories, like prose stories on the website, and like that that one like it it. There was a real low point in that story, in those stories, in the modern day stories, um, but the old ones were really cool, a real epic sense to them. So we have, uh, Wayfarer, issue 2 or 5, I could only find these two issues. Um, so I actually don't really know what the story, like, what this specific story is, but, um, I thought it would be around, like, Ice Age, around that set, Ice Age Alliances, um, was my, would be my guess because of the scenery. Um, the snow, and like just like the weird creatures. Definitely something from Magic's past. Uh, yeah, a uh, cool cover as well. And that's about it. And the next one is uh, the Antiquities War issue four or four. Uh, so the Antiquities War was a big, like big storyline event they did uh, back in the day. Which also, I think, also one of the sets, one of the early sets of magic was called Antiquities. Uh, which was, you know, just, which had a lot of very powerful cards and stuff like that. Um, and there's also like a card called the Antiquities War, which is basically, uh, I'm not exactly too sure like what the actual story was, I think. Because there were two different wars in the very first days of... Magic the Gathering was the Brothers War, which was basically between two very powerful, like, wizard brothers, and, like, they made really powerful artifacts against each other, like, war machines and stuff, um, which is basically what the Antiquities War is. This isn't canon anymore, because the Brothers War basically was, like, the, the revamp of it, because the Brothers War was all told through novels, and this came before that. So this basically is that storyline and it's like a really, they expanded it a lot in the books. Um, there was a lot more characters, um, the, there was a lot more like consequences, just a lot more locations and you see a lot of that in the early Kata as well. A lot of that references the places or the events of the Brothers War or at the Antiquities War as it used to be known as. And looks like this cover is pretty like wacky, um, it's very, it's, it's hand, it's painted. Uh, you can definitely tell that, um, but it's just such a strange cover. But uh, yeah, I just saw the two Magical Gathering logos in the bin, and I just picked them up. Next, we got Batman 48. Weddings in two issues, I think. Great. Uh, however, I do gotta say, my store, uh, my local store, King's Comics, they have an exclusive variant cover. Which is caused by Guillaume March. Um, yeah, I guess I'll buy that as well because why not? Uh, this is a cool cover. Um, I do like how the Justice League are all in chess pieces. Are they the Justice League? I think they are. No, this is the Bat Family. It's Nightwing. Yeah, I thought it was Green Lantern for some reason. Uh, yeah, and Joker's whacking them. Um, do. Kind of cool, not like the the thing they did with the eyes, where it's just where it's like this one is completely shrouded in black and it's got dark green in it. But again, still not a fan of Tom King's Batman. 
Uh, I, I am debating whether I want to drop this title. Um, because Tom King's on for the rest of the year. Uh, well, he's on for 103 issues or something crazy like that, which is basically a year's worth of issues. Because it's bi-weekly. So I'm debating whether I want to just like follow his entire first year, or whether I want to drop it after the wedding. Because, like, if... I don't know what other events he's got planned, but given, like, his current trajectory of how he wants to make every, like, every other character he introduces, or existing characters, have PTSD, like Poison Ivy, um, Harley Quinn, uh, Booster, uh, Booster Gold, his really weird Booster Gold, Kite Man, like, they all get, get PTSD, so that he can write them in his, uh, Sanctuary storyline, so, I don't know, I don't know what else he's gonna do with that, so, I guess I'll see until then, but... Well, I do really want to get those. Justice League. Um, Justice League issue 1. This is the Jim Lee variant with only Batman on it. I love this cover. I love how clean it is. How only the, You can see the title is still at the bottom there. And there's just nothing on top. It's a very, very beautiful cover. Uh, Jim Lee's Batman is probably the best thing he can draw. Um, he just... He can draw Batman like no one else, really. Like, um... He's drawn the character for so long, and yeah, it's just it's just a fantastic cover. Also, a fantastic issue as well. Really, really loved this issue. Um, it had everything I really wanted from it. The Martian Manhunter was back in the Justice League. Uh, they paired him uh, against Luthor as like the two heads of the Legion of Doom in the Justice League, and um, there was just so much cool stuff. Like the Hall of Justice appeared again. They had like the mental boardroom meeting, which was really which was done really well. And yeah, they, they cut out like the characters that I didn't really gel with in the Justice League. Like I didn't really think there was a need for two Green Lanterns in the Justice League. And I really also really like Jon Stewart and I think he looks really cool. Like um the, his construct designs are always really cool. And uh great to see him back. Uh Cyborg is just the other character that I'm not a big fan of, but like with stuff like Justice League Odyssey, like he might like they're always splitting them up anyway. But it really certainly feels like Justice League Unlimited uh, from the small, like, fight scenes we saw in this issue. And it also definitely feels a lot like Morrison's JLA uh, with a lot of callbacks to the past. Um, Justice Legion Alpha appeared in one of the panels, uh, which was really, which was really cool. I love Justice, I love DC 1 million in general. Um, so yeah, I, I, next issue has a Wonder Woman variant cover, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I really... Uh, I really hope that this run turns out to be, like, the run that a lot of people wanted. They really want the Justice League on, like, the epic scale with all their, like, with all of the heavy hitters, um, legacy characters, which is what they're doing now, and I think it'll be very cool to see how this, to follow this book. I think this is definitely a book worth picking up every single, uh, two weeks or month. So, yeah, um, this Saturday, actually, though. Uh, I will be going there. There is a, there is a convention on in Sydney. There's a convention on in Australia, which is already really surprising. But Supernova's on, and basically they have a bunch of guests. Uh, Alex Sinclair and Scott Williams are both going to be there. I'm going to find some, uh, find some Jim Lee covers. I have I have one of the Hush covers. I can get them signed, which would be really cool. I, I'm picking up a commission, artwork. I've got. A guy I know doing um the art he's the artist for the Phantom comics here in Australia, um that'll be really cool uh and there's just gonna be a lot of vendors apparently well there's gonna be uh, enough vendors with a lot of comics and back issues so hopefully I can get a lot of the cheap issues um I'm totally I'm definitely keeping an eye out for the just the normal regular issues I'm missing uh because the zero year stuff is starting to go up in price a little bit which is a bit annoying because when stuff in America goes up in price slightly in Australia, like the price adjustment, like the inflation or the um, conversion rate due to all that, like it just goes completely insane. So I'm definitely trying to find some of the standard issues left and also some of the really cheap variants, like the regular uh, B covers, like the, the themed monthly ones. Um, but yeah, until next time, this has been uh, Legion of Guile.